Howdy y'all and welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. So my six and a half Creedmoor gun build videos did pretty well and I think people enjoyed watching them and, and learned from them. So I decided to build a six and a half Grendel and I went with FDE as you can see with some black accents here. On this build I was more interested in getting something a little bit lighter and I wasn't as necessarily interested in more of a budget friendly build. So I spent a little bit more than you probably need to on something like this, but I wanted to build something that I really was going to enjoy shooting. Probably going to take this hunting, especially once I get a, a nice scope on it. But I wanted to take you all along this process again because I had some questions on AR-15 versus the AR-10 platform and the differences between uh, the builds of each. So. I figured I would go ahead and do another build. And again, I am no expert at this, so make sure if you have any concerns on your build, you take it to a gunsmith. I recommend getting it headspaced. Every build I've done, I usually get headspaced, so I would do that before you go out and shoot it. That being said, I spent around probably a little over $1,000 on this gun. And again, given this day and age with the lead times and the inflation and the cost of parts and everything probably isn't too bad. I've been saving the parts for over a year, just slowly buying them as I see sales come up. So if you're interested in saving a little bit of money, that's probably the best way to go is, you know, as you see sales and as you get the items you want, you buy them. Otherwise you're going to probably end up spending a little bit more. But as usual, I went the Aero Precision upper and lowers. I went with the blemished version. Can't really go wrong with that. So the tools in this video are going to be pretty similar to what I used in my six and a half Creedmoor build. You're going to need some Allen wrenches, probably need a couple screwdrivers. You'll need a torque wrench to be able to put your barrel on. This handguard takes a, I think it's a T20 uh, star bit. So you'll need a, a driver for that. You'll need some sort of vice grip and then a block or something to be able to hold your receiver and your vice grip. And of course you'll need a armorer's wrench to help torque down the barrel, the nuts, all that kind of stuff. So not a ton of tools. You know, I think you can get a lot of that stuff for 20, 30 bucks on Amazon. So if you have any questions on what I used, feel free to shoot me an email or comment on the, uh, the video and I will get back to you. Similarly to the six and a half Creedmoor, I'm probably gonna break this into three or four videos. This build went a little bit quicker than that one did because I didn't have issues with uh, finding a wrench to fit my barrel nut since I went with an Aero Precision handguard here. And then on another note, YouTube does not like anything dealing with the trigger. So for that video, I'm gonna put a link in the description around the time I would be installing that. And it'll just take you back to the six and a half Creedmoor trigger. I use the same exact trigger it's basically an identical installation on this versus the six and a half Creedmoor. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. I know that one can be a little bit more confusing, but I really just didn't want to get a strike against my channel for posting another video that I know they're going to have issues with. So all this being said, let's dive into uh, part one of this video and I will see you all at the end. All right, so I'm going to start here with the Aero Precision upper receiver. So this again, I went with a blemished uh, version. I honestly don't think I've found the blemish on this one yet. So again, I like going blemished. I think it's uh, a way to have a little bit more budget friendly of a build. And so I'm gonna start with the upper parts kit. Basically you have here your forward assist assembly. And then I bought kind of a, a different, a little bit more unique of a dust cover here. This, it'll, it says six and a half Grendel on it. Um, it was from Tactical Gun Parts. So I did that and then I also bought your rod and your spring as well. So I've got that. And don't lose this little part, it's got like a little C C clamp in here too. If I didn't already just lose it. No, there it is. It is very difficult to see. 
and that just helps keep the rod in place. So we'll go ahead and start. I will do the dust cover first. So to do this, you'll go ahead and take your dust cover and go ahead and thread the rod through. You'll be able to tell which end should start with because it's kind of hard to see here, but I've got a little uh, mark here where that C clip's gonna go and that's gonna be on the outside. So you don't wanna put that in first, but you'll go ahead. You can kind of get an idea of how this will, uh, this will set up and work here with the dust cover. And so you'll need to put that under tension with the spring. So we'll go ahead and grab the spring. And to do this, there's a long end of the spring and a short end. And so the long end goes against your dust cover and the short end will go against the receiver. And you, you need to put this under tension. So what I typically do for this, so I'm gonna take it and twist the long end around to kind of put that under tension. And then you can thread that through. Oh, looks like it came undone. All right, so it'll look a little bit like that and you should be able to have some tension on it. You can kind of make sure it works just like that. So pretty straightforward and easy on the dust cover. Okay, so now we will do the forward assist. I'll go ahead and unpackage that. I bought this Aero Precision forward assist. Nothing really special here. You know, it, it just comes with the Ford assist, the spring, and a uh, roll pin. What I really like about Aero Precision is you actually don't need to use the roll pin. There's a threaded screw right there that you can take a 1 16th inch Allen key and go ahead and unscrew that. And so you'll wanna go ahead and just put your spring on. There's not really a specific way to put the spring on. And then in this case, I do like to use a little of uh, the blue thread locker on it. And so I'll put a little bit of the thread locker on the threads there. And what you should do here is you can kind of see there's a, a flat side and a curved side of the uh, Ford Assist. The side that is flat will go away and the side that's curved will go in towards the receiver here. So you'll go ahead and push that all the way in and then you'll just put your uh, threaded pin in here and get that tightened down. And that should be good there. So just get a little napkin or towel and wipe away this excess thread locker on here. And so you should be good to go. And really that's all of uh, the upper receiver parts. Not, not too much trouble there. You don't need the roll pin like I mentioned, but I would definitely save it for something in case uh, you need it somewhere down the road. For the lower receiver, again, I did the Aero Precision FDE. I did the blemished uh, again as well on this one. And I don't really see the blemish. So that's always nice. But we'll go ahead and do the lower parts kit, which on this one, I just bought the AR15 M4 MOE lower parts kit. The only thing it doesn't come with is the control group because I actually bought a separate trigger. If you wanted to just use a basic AR Aero Precision trigger, you can buy this kit with the trigger. So it looks like it comes in three different packages here. Um, base lower parts kit, additional lower parts kit, and then your grip and trigger guard. The first thing we're gonna jump into will be uh, the magazine catch. There's quite a few uh, bits and pieces here, so make sure you don't lose anything. 
It's actually better if you had like some sort of bowl. Um, my wife will kill me if she knows I'm doing this, so hopefully she's not watching. But I'm gonna go ahead and put all these in this white bowl because it is easier to grab everything out of there. And then I will just pull out what's needed for each setup. So we'll go ahead and put all the additional lower parts in there as well so that we have everything out in there. So for this, you're gonna need this piece here. You'll need your bigger spring. You kind of see that it goes over like that. And then where is it? And then right here, your bolt release button. So here you will basically place this piece here. There's a little hole right there and you can just place that right in there and it should fit perfectly in that. You'll flip it over. You'll insert the spring over here and then you can push the button basically through. And what I like to do is I'll push it all the way through and then I'll come to this other backside here. Then you just start twisting this up. And really you're gonna do it till about the threads come almost through your button. You may have to adjust it a little bit. But you essentially, I don't know how well you can see. But there's a piece, black piece in here right here. When you push it, it goes down and you want it to clear to release the mag. So that's pretty much all you do on that guy. 